Are you looking for truth from God's Word that you can understand and apply to your life? You'll find it today on Make It Clear with Dr. Stan Pons, Bible teacher and president of Florida Bible College in beautiful Orlando. Listen now as Stan makes it clear. Hi, my name is Stan Pons, and I'm the host of Make It Clear and the president of Florida Bible College in beautiful Orlando, Florida. I want to thank all of you for being with us day after day as you're hearing us all over the world. And you know that most of the time we do a lot of teaching, but periodically I want you to make some new friends like I have, and I want you to meet some of my friends. And one of them today is one that you might have known back in the 90s, and if you followed this person's career, you might have seen or or heard about him since then, and this would be Hercules. And when you hear that, I say that a little bit tongue-in-cheek, but many of you that had followed that Hercules series, The Legendary Journeys, it actually filmed from 1995 to 1999, had six seasons, and since then it's produced action figures and other memorabilia, but it happened to be the highest rated syndicated television show in the world at that time. And I'm talking about Kevin Sorbo. And from that time, you know that uh, a lot of doors have opened up to him to not only do movies, but other projects as well. And some of those projects have been strongly family-based, family-oriented, we might say. So I want to just right now welcome you to the program today. Kevin, thank you for being with us. Well, thank you so much. I got to do a quick correction. Hercules shot from 1993 to 2000, actually, because um, before the series started in 1995, we did five two-hour movies. Wow! So, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to lose that seventh season because I, I was down in New Zealand for a long time. But it's beautiful and it's amazing, and that was a wonderful chapter of my life. I got to tell you. Well, it really was, and I'm sure it has set you up for where you are now. But a lot of folks don't know that you're a guy that was born in Mound of Minnesota. Well, how did you get from Minnesota to Hollywood? You know, uh, a little mound is about uh, 25 miles west of Minneapolis. It's a small little town, but uh, about 7,000 people, but a very supportive town for a lot of things. I mean, I, I, I played football and basketball and baseball and golf through high school and uh, you know, football games, about 5,000 of the 7,000 would show up to support the team. So it was a, <laughs> it was a very tight, tight community. And we were on beautiful shores of Lake Minnetonka. And that last part of Tonka is important because we were home to Tonka toys for many, many decades. That's amazing. That is great to know. And now, but what brought you from Mound to Hollywood and then to New Zealand for that special period of time of filming there? Well, I think it was a couple of things. I mean, my mom was a big fan of old Hollywood. So I'm the fourth of five kids. I got two older brothers, an older sister and a younger brother. And uh, I'd be the one sitting with my mom to watch all these old Hollywood reruns from, you know, Spencer Tracy and Catherine Hepburn and Clark Gable and Humphrey Bogart and all that. And it kind of set the seed for me. I was very fascinated by the whole movie industry. And then I went to the Guthrie Theater when I was 11 years old, the Guthrie Theater for those in the... Uh, theatrical world certainly know what it is a lot of people from broadway start there they mm-hmm. do a lot of plays there before they move it to new york and uh, i went and saw the merchant of venice shakespeare i don't know what the heck they were saying but i was totally mesmerized <laughs> by the actors up on stage and um on the way home i told my mom i said you know i'm, I'm gonna be an actor uh, that's what i want to do and i got that nice pat on the leg and that's nice dear from my mom and mm-hmm. but it was always there the seed was planted being a jock, you know, we, we, people made fun of the people in the drama classes. So I, I fell in that click where I was nervous about even telling my jock buddies what I wanted to do. But <laughs> when I got into college, I sort of uh, shed that click image. And even though I continued playing sports, I, I had a minor in drama along with a double major in marketing and advertising. So I knew I knew where it was. And I just packed up the car and drove out to L.A. not knowing a soul. And um I already had that all-important SAG card because all through my college years, I was already doing a number of commercials. Minneapolis is home to a lot of big companies from 3M to Pillsbury and Mm -hmm. Target and all kinds of things. So I had that important SAG card, which got me in the door as a commercial agent right away. And I was one of the lucky ones. I never had to work another job out there. I started working right away in commercials and guest starring. And Hercules came about six years later with a, number of auditions and it was supposed to just be five two-hour movies i got to work a full year with a great late anthony quinn who played zeus mm. and uh, by by the third movie universal studios said we love what we see 
and we think this will make a great TV series. And we just kept shooting uh, right after the movies into the one hour shows. And by our third year, we passed Baywatch as the most watched TV show in the world. So pretty cool, pretty cool thing. And then right after that, for seven years, I went straight into Andromeda, another five year series. And that was created by the uh, late Gene Roddenberry. So yeah. the captain I played, Cap- Captain Dylan Hunt was the first captain ever created after Captain Kirk. So um, had a nice 12 year run and then with two TV series continuous. And then I just sort of dove into the, the independent movie world. And that's kind of where I've been ever since. But, you know, your name still rings loud with a lot of people, although you have moved maybe away from what we might call network series. You are so well known everywhere that you bring up the name Kevin Sorbo. They obviously will go back to Andromeda. They'll also go back into the Hercules situation. But they also know your name because they've seen how that your career just continues to go on and on. In fact, it's kind of exploded. You're so busy all the time. About how many movies have you been involved in? I just finished my 61st movie, and uh, most, there's probably 10 I wish I didn't do, but, you know, not everything turns out the way you think it's going to turn out. Well, but, I've known uh, some pastors who have said that there's some churches they wouldn't have taken, you know, those, those kinds yeah. of things that happen, so that's all right. But you're doing, but, you know, it was, it was, it, I started my own production company about uh, a little over 10 years ago now. I got tired of, uh, the, you know, pardon my French, the crap coming out of Hollywood through television and movies. And I wanted to do some of my own stuff. And mm-hmm. uh, my agency, once I came out of that uh, Christian conservative closet, my wife warned me, uh, mm-hmm. but I didn't care. I got tired of the hypocrisy. Um, mm-hmm. I've been blacklisted from Hollywood because of uh, my beliefs and also being a conservative. They're the ones who scream for tolerance, as you know, but they have zero tolerance. They're very mm-hmm. hypocritical. <laughs> so I just, uh, I said, fine. And I, I've been, you know, it's been a God thing to raise money because the hardest thing is finding money. Most of my movies are in the $3 million range. Mm -hmm. And that sounds like a lot. That's nothing in Hollywood. And that's maybe catering on an an Avenger or Pirates of the Caribbean. You you know, they do $300 million movies. Mm -hmm. So it's tough for us to raise money for these small films, even though um, they're better films than most of these movies that Hollywood comes out with. But, uh, you know, you don't have the power behind them to promote them. They have, you know, they'll spend $100 million on the next Avenger movie to just to put it on advertising. So we have to rely on word of mouth. And uh, we need, uh, you know, we need people to support these movies. Otherwise, Hollywood's going to win their battle, trust me. Well, we have a large listening audience, and they are committed to standing strong and lasting long. And yet they see some of these movies that are coming out. I'm talking about the good ones now. And they look at it to really have a moral message and that that moral message is a good message and biblical, that it won't take people off the reservation, but yet not be preachy at the same time. And it seems like the film projects in which you're involved really stands true to that very truth, which is it wants to have value. Yes, there's some entertainment, but it's called edutainment. You're still trying to get a message across that'll change their thinking and their lifestyle in some positive way. But in your past, you had, um, I guess you might say, a major health crisis that some people don't know about. And that, too, also began to frame you as you move forward with your career. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, it was the end of season five on Hercules, about the last three months of filming down there. Um, I was having all kinds of problems with my left shoulder and my fingers were cold and numb and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And I, we finished season five. I came back to America to uh, do the uh, big promotional tour for my first big budget movie for Universal Studios called Call the Conqueror. Call was the uh, father of Conan the Barbarian that Arnold Schwarzenegger played in the, in the novels. Mm-hmm. And um, I saw a doctor. I was up in New York City doing Letterman and a bunch of talk shows. And I saw a doctor there. He said, you really better get this checked out. I think it's cardiovascular. He ended up being right. I got back to uh, L.A. My doctor in L.A. found a uh, lump in my uh, left shoulder up in the subclavicle area. And he said, yeah, we well, need to do a biopsy on this. And before I did that, I went to my chiropractor. And as I laid on my back, I heard a voice inside my head said, don't let him crack your neck. And the weird thing about that is that he's never cracked my neck in eight years of me seeing him because he knows I hate my neck cracked. The voice came back louder, more urgent, and said, don't let him crack your neck. So while I argued with the voice inside my head, he cracked my neck. And that crack from left to to right opened up that lump. And that lump was an aneurysm that had been pumping blood clots slowly into my arm over the last who knows how long. Mm -hmm. And uh, three clots went into my brain. I suffered three strokes and Mm -hmm. pretty much uh, gave me three years of hell after that. And uh, Mm -hmm. had to learn to to speak again, had to learn to walk again, uh, balance again. It was a long process. But uh, I, I fought through it with uh, 
Uh, you know, I tell people I, I, I've always had faith, but I never needed faith until this moment happened in my life, you know. So I had a long battle with God, a long battle with myself. And uh, I, had a, I had a fiance at the time that we got married a year later that um, was unbelievably supportive before she, we said for better or worse, she got the worst part first and still stuck <laughs> by my side. So, um, but we fought through it. And uh, that voice was certainly God trying to warn me and I just didn't pay attention to it. And uh, I wrote a book called true strength, my journey from Hercules to mere mortal and how nearly dying saved my life. And it opened a door. I thought I never thought I'd be doing. And that's when I started doing a lot of speaking events. Uh, we spoke at a lot of uh, hospitals and doctors conventions and uh, motivational things about you know overcoming the overcoming the roadblocks that life does throw at us and then people found out that I'm a Christian and all now I've been doing a lot of speaking events and pro life and speaking at Christian schools as well so it's been an amazing new uh, door that opened up to me that I never thought I'd be doing and I do about 15 speaking events a year now across the country. Now, out of the 61 film projects that you have, and probably extensive, uh, which one really is a, a, a film that says, this is the one that I want to be remembered most for? Do you have one like that? And why? Well, I'm sure a lot of people would think it would be God's Not Dead, but I got to take a movie I did earlier with Pure Flix called What If. What If was really, I shot that about nine years ago. It was really the first openly faith-based movie. I, I, I hate to calling them faith-based movies because let's face it, atheism is a faith. Yep. And I think a lot, of athe- a, lot of, a lot of atheists have more faith than Christians do. I mean, they believe in absolutely nothing. And that takes quite a bit of faith, I think. But um, I, uh, it, it's called What If? It's the same writers that did God's Not Dead. It just came out a couple years earlier. And it's a wonderful, wonderful family movie. And at the time, Pure Flix didn't really do a very good job of getting it out there. Um, but it's been surviving on word of mouth. But certainly God's Not Dead, a little $2 million movie that made over $100 million uh, around the world, which is unbelievable. Um, and that was that was strong word of mouth. But Peter Fix also did a pretty smart thing in how they got it out there. So um, I don't know. And my, my last movie that was in theaters, Let There Be Light, I'm very proud of that movie. I directed mm-hmm. it as well. My wife co-wrote it. My two boys are in it. Mm-hmm. And I just directed another one that you guys are down there in Orlando. Am I correct? Yes, that's correct. I was just, I was just down there at the Christian Film Festival, and we were one of the premier showings. And it's called Miracle in East Texas. It's a true story set in 1930 about two con men, played by myself and John Ratzenberger. People remember John, of course, from Cheers. He was the Cliff, the Postman. Right. Uh, Lou Gossett, Lou Gossett Jr., uh, Tyler Maine, who played Sabretooth in all the X-Men movies. It's a wonderful movie about these two con men that would woo widows out of their money on fake oil wells, but they actually strike oil. True story. And it was the largest oil fund in history of the world. And um, through their journey of, because uh, they end up going to jail, of course, but through their journey, um, my my character, uh, be, they both become Christians. My character actually becomes a pastor. And it's a, it's, it's a family friendly. It's funny. We actually, at the Houston Film Festival, we won Best Romantic Comedy. And mm-hmm. Orlando here this past week, um, we won uh, Best Family Movie. So uh, we're right now looking for P&A money out there to get it in the theaters. We're hoping to get it to... Uh, at least 500 to 1,000 screens by this fall. So any listeners out there that want to jump on board, <laughs> talk to me. So, well, um, I'll tell you, and, and they do too, because we have so many listeners. And, of course, our school, and we've got such a large uh, social media base, et cetera. And that might be good for you now. What would they do to get in touch with you, or what can they do to begin to make these things known? Where should they start to come alongside you to have these kinds of projects, uh, have a wider audience even? Well, you know, uh, well, they can go to kevinsorbo.net, certainly. Through there, they can, they, get a, they can get a hold of me through the fan site there. Mm-hmm. And um, I will, then I can get a hold of them if they're really serious about it. It really comes down, funding is the hardest thing, as I mentioned to you. It's this, the toughest thing to find money. Both, both my last two movies, Let There Be Light, um, were, were God things. They came out of the blue. I mean, we had Let There Be Light. It was a wonderful script. It was only finished about three weeks um, ago when I got a call from Sean Hannity. And yeah. Sean called me up and said, he goes, Sorbo, it's Hannity. I love your movie, What If, and Abel's Field, and God's Not Dead. I want to do something like that. Do you have something like that? And I said, well, actually, actually I do. Mm-hmm. So he said, well, fly to New York and pitch it to me. So he hung, hangs up me, and I look at my wife, and I said, I guess we got to fly to New York. So <laughs> yeah. we went to New York. We pitched him, and 30 minutes later, he wrote a check. And he mm-hmm. was behind the movie 100%. And then I was at a speaking event in Palm Desert, 
And um, I was signing my book, True Strength, afterwards, and a gentleman came up to me and said, look, I have this much money. Can you make a movie out of this? And I looked at him and I said, uh, yes, sir, I can. And uh, we <laughs> went up to Calgary. We went up to Calgary to make this movie, to make uh, this Miracle in East Texas movie for the tax credits that Canada gives. Yes. And the movie, the movie turned out fantastic. I'm very proud of it. It's a wonderful film. Um, and, uh, you know, it really... It really comes down to how do you get these things funded? And a lot of times it ends up just being a God thing. It's as simple as that. It's some, some person comes out and uh, just comes in to save the day, basically, be a superhero. Look, you mentioned about Hercules Uri and Andromeda. I mentioned when I used to go through airports, I got stopped for those things all the time. 80% of the time now, I get stopped. People say, please make more movies like Soul Surfer and God's Not Dead. I get that all the time. So it's amazing to me that, no, that people are out there, there's an audience out there that's tired of the stuff coming out of Hollywood. They're tired of the negativity and the hate and the, you know, the agenda pushing that they do. That's politics, right. is down, politics is downstream of culture. Who runs the culture? Hollywood runs the culture. So uh, it, it's interesting because let the light. I got a call from Netflix after that came out because it did pretty well in theaters with very little promotion money behind it. They said, you know what? We're not paying attention to a huge population out there and we know it. So I went into Netflix. I met with the film and TV division. I pitched them a number of wonderful scripts that I have. They hemmed and hawed over months of it and ultimately didn't do anything. And it's amazing to me, the ideology, just because they have, you know, there's God in it and Jesus and positive values and morals. I know that's the reason why they didn't put it in there. And it's weird to me. It's weird to see where the state, the country is, is going in the, during these next few stages and where it has been going for the last 20, 30 years. It just seems to be magnified now more and more. And you can see it in the agenda and the, the, what they're pushing out there and what they're trying to do. And we're confusing our kids. We're getting, I mean, it's just strange out there. And my battle is to just, you know, fight it with good projects. And I get people stopping me, as I said, all the time. I've had... I had a Muslim woman come up to me and say, I've watched God's Not Dead, and your movie made me become a Christian. And she got a baptism, her and her seven-year-old daughter. It was incredible. And I get stories like this all the time through my fan site. It's, it's really amazing. These movies do transform people and make them ch- change their lives for the better. It's those stories that people want to hear, and they know that they're true, and lives are being changed, and the money is going to come in. You know, where God guides, God will provide, and where God leads, he'll feed. And so if he's giving you these visions, these ideas, he will bring the funding to it, and it'll have a great and wide audience. Uh, Dear ones, if you just turned in, my name is Stan Pons, and I'm the host here at Make It Clear, the president of Florida Bible College in Orlando, and our guest today is Kevin Sorbo. And I really appreciated what Kevin had to say a moment ago about the film going out and a Muslim lady who came to faith in Christ alone and then went on and went public with it, which is a huge thing with her family and others. But Kevin, do you have one more story like that from one of your uh, films that someone had seen and their life was so dramatically changed forever? You got any more like that? You know, I get I, I get a number of these type of stories all the time coming through not only the fan site but as I as I walk in per, you know walking through with my, all my travels. I was just recently I'm doing a documentary on the life of John Lennox. For those of you who don't know John, he's a retired a mathematics uh, professor at Oxford University. He's an apologist. He has battled against the greatest, biggest atheist in the world from from uh, Dawkins to Hitchens to you, you name it. He's been out there and it's he's an amazing man. And we shot two weeks in Israel as well. So we were in Israel for two weeks and up in Oxford for a week just recently this year. And as we walked through Israel, um, I, I, I felt like I was a beetle, you know, because, <laughs> you know, I was, I was in the middle of really people that support my movies. These were all p- people from, from South Korea, from China, from Russia, from all over from America and Canada, Mexico, all over Eastern Europe, all these places that were there on their own pilgrimage. And they saw me, they recognized me, they came up. I did a bunch of group photos with people. Um, and it was just incredible to, to see that, you know what, these people are paying attention and they love what we're doing. And, I, you know, I, 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 I try to do movies that, yeah, you want to preach to the choir, but at the same time, I want to reach across the divide there. I want to reach out to agnostics. I want to reach out to atheists. I mean, I get all kinds of hate email coming mm-hmm. through to me. These people attack me and all that. And you, it's like, these, are, these to me, are the people you got to pray for because these are, these are sad, miserable people. 
and they're looking for something more in their life. And right now they're just filled with hate and anger because they obviously don't like who they are. They don't like their lives. They don't like their relationships. They don't like, you know, I keep telling people, you got to get rid of the negative people in your life. It does you no good for yourself. Be, surround yourself with positive people. Find this job that you like. Find yourself, you know, so many people talk to me and write to me and say they hate where they're at and hate this. Well, change your life. People get, you know, fear holds back a lot of people and you got to get past that fear. You got to go down that, that, that road that you're afraid to go down because that's it. Life doesn't promise to be easy. We all know that. And it's, mm -hmm. it's really fighting to get past that. But I, when I was in Israel, the number of stories that people came up to me, some people come up crying. And they just say, you know, your movies have, have changed me. They moved me, and uh, that's why I wanted to be an actor. I wanted to do. I wanted to do roles that people could relate to. That they would say, "That's me," or "That's a friend of mine," or "I get that." I wanted to make people laugh. I want to make them cry. I wanted to make people think. And Hollywood's gotten away from that. It's all about visual effects now, which is fine. I like the roller coaster ride too, but that really, it's it comes down to. Um, doing more movies like this and having people support them because we need that support. That's the only way to get these things out there. I want to thank you so much for being with us for this very special interview with Kevin Sorbo. As you know that we have recorded this a little while ago, but yet very recently, so that you'd be able to get into the mind of Kevin of what made him move from the area of doing the acting for the TV series and the movie Hercules, among other projects, and then move him into the direction of doing what we might call family-friendly movies. Now, they're more than just being movies that don't have cursing in it. These are movies that really have a message. Message, a message that would hopefully turn the viewer, have their heart turned toward the Lord. And so I'm glad that you could be with us today to be able to hear that interview with Kevin Sorbo. But we know that this interview is longer than one program could handle. So we've divided this interview into two parts. And that's why I want to invite you to be back with us next time for Make It Clear, because this way you'll be able to hear the continuing testimony of Kevin Sorbo and really what brought him into this new genre. Many of you perhaps have seen some of those movies that he's been involved in, especially the one talking about Let There Be Light. He's got new projects that are coming down as well, and we want you to be a part of that to know about it as well. But it's important to know what goes on in the mind and the heart of these actors, how that God called them into that industry, and then how he moved them in a direction to really standing strong and lasting long for the Lord. So I'm glad you could be with us for today's broadcast. Some of you might be thinking in terms of, well, why would anyone want to do that? Hollywood is so filled with not only non-God, but worse than that, they are anti-God and they're activists against against God in the lives of the actors, the producers, the writers, and what comes out on the screen is uh, just awful. Now, why would someone want to in some way get involved in that? Well, it's no different than a missionary that might come out of your church and your ministry to go into the secular worldview of the jungle people, we might say. And I say that not in any marginalization, that is not putting anyone down. But when you go into a culture that is truly anti-God and they're worshiping other gods, whether they're idols and all the rest, those missionaries are coming alongside those people, loving them, manifesting a Christ-like spirit, and yet living a separated life unto the Lord. For the whole purpose of helping those people who would never darken the doors of a church, to have them be able to hear a clear gospel presentation that salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. So who better to go into that industry than well-respected actors who can not only act, but direct or produce or write. And as they do that, they're coming alongside people that really have put down Christians, but now they can see authentic, genuine Christians. Well, Kevin Sorbo is one out of many men and women who are willing to not lower their flag or the banner for their stand for Christ. So listening to Kevin Sorbo today kind of gave you a little bit of a story about his heart, and you can see that he's really energized for that. But I want you to be with us for the next broadcast of Make It Clear, and that would be part two of this adventure. This way you can know what's more in his mind and perhaps understand why he felt very much called to live a life of conservative Christianity, a biblical life, and standing strong for the Lord. In addition, I want to thank all of you that recognize that Make It Clear is really sponsored by people just like you that believe in Make It Clear, making it clear, taking the Word of God and clearly giving it to others in various resources and various venues, in radio, television, movies, broadcast, podcast, and all the rest. So thank you for praying for us, but also know that we're a listener-supported ministry. So as you give to Make It Clear, 
that helps us to further the ministry of the Word of God going out clearly and correctly through all of our various broadcasts. So if you'd like to give to Make It Clear, just go to our website, makeitclear.org, and you can do that very easily and very securely. So thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. And be with us next time for Make It Clear. You're listening to Make It Clear with the teaching of Dr. Stan Pons, founder of Make It Clear Ministries and president of Florida Bible College in beautiful Orlando, Florida. Make It Clear is dedicated to taking the Word of God with clarity into every person's world. It is the support of listeners like you who make the ministry of Make It Clear possible. You can provide your tax-deductible gift to Make It Clear online by going to makeitclear.org. Or you can mail your gift to Make It Clear, P.O. Box 607-901, Orlando, Florida, 32860. Thank you for helping us make it clear. If you would like to have Dr. Pond speak at your church or event, please send us an email at tellmemore at makeitclear.org. Thank you, and remember to make it clear. Make it clear.